I had to schlep everything upstairs here. We've got, uh, well, this little Nicho area is going to be accented. Um, his fireplace is going to be accented in the minor sand with the gold swirl, which you can see right there. That little swatch is Hildago Brown. We're going to go with that for the wall co cover. I've got my outlet covers taken off. I took the blinds off, marked them. We've got the floor masked off. I've established a mixing area. And we came in right about 700 square feet. So the fireplace is going to be minor sand. And we're going to do minor sand on this accent here in this little nicho. And the rest of it's going to be Hildago Brown. So as far as ordering, um, I'm using... Uh, I just went ahead, just to be on the safe side, I've got two uh, color packs of Minor Sand, and I've got four of Hildago Brown. Uh, we're going to be right around using a gallon of sealer, so I have an extra gallon just in case. And I also have my match spray paint for each color for outlet covers. And, uh, of course, there's my plus three. Another useful application for the match paint is on these really ugly fireplaces that are black with the gold stripe. Um, what we want to do is make this feature just kind of go away, except for the fireplace. We don't want this to draw attention because it's antiquated and old looking. So, On these cracks, we are just putting a real simple uh, coat of... Uh, we're taping them essentially with paper tape, uh, perforated paper tape. They have all different kinds of tape, you can use whatever, but I like to use, uh, you know, this is for cracks. Now if you don't tape your cracks when you go over it with Fresco Harmony, or paint or anything, they're going to crack back out. I'm using the minor sand color as the material to tape these cracks. This is an... Uh, excellent reason why I use all-purpose joint compound for when I run into situations where I need to be do, uh, taping I can uh, use the mud that I'm working with to tape um, as opposed to a topping joint compound. So with the cracks on the Hildago brown wall I'm gonna use that color as opposed to using the minor sand color. I want to use the the color to patch that uh, I'm using for my um, for my patches, and um, there has to be a consistent layer of mud under all the tape. Otherwise, your tape won't stick. It'll blister, and it'll look worse than when you started. So, and then I like to run mud over the top of the tape as well. I just really want to saturate that whole tape with. Uh, with my, uh, if I have pieces that are intersecting, I'll wipe in the, you know, one side and then come back and do the piece over the top. I'm going to be starting the, the uh, minor sand color first. Let that dry up a little bit so that I can cut in my Hildago Brown uh, dominant color on the, on the walls. So again, I start in the... Uh, so I approach this just like a wall, um, always working left to right. Um, generally, I work uh, top to bottom as well. So I'm going to put this material on here. Right now, I just want to concentrate on the uh, this little arch section. Also, our painted fireplace has cured out so that I'm able to mask it and cut it cut in right to the right to the edge of it, which is nice. So anytime I'm dealing with a bull nose or an arch, what I like to do is sort of smooth out the entire section that I'm working with and come back on the arch last. A little chunk of regu regular perforated paper tape And I'm just going to smooth that entire arch. It's literally that easy. Now if I want to head down here and work to the bottom section, I'm going to leave, I always want to leave an abstract break line. 
It's just a good habit to get into. So we'll cut this. And also, another good idea on that brake line is to uh, take my 6 inch and feather, feather my edge. So I'm going to leave this for a little bit. This works well also doing um, ceilings where I'm doing a large amount of footage. Always want to leave an abstract brake line before I head to another section of ceiling. So I'm working these two sections. Obviously, when I come into stuff like this, when I'm doing bullnose around into these like, you know, built-in cabinets and stuff, this stuff is going to be time consuming than uh, more so than a regular wall. I'm approaching this section very strategically. And I'm, I'm always concerned about my brake lines. The reason I'm conscious of the brake lines is because when that mud starts drying, it becomes more difficult to blend. The better, the faster you go, the better it'll look. You'd be surprised at the thickness of texture that I'm leaving on this surface. And if I get too aggressive a line here, I can clean it up with my trowel, or uh, I can come in with my 6 inch and just clean up little things that need to be touched up. So, I'm working down this lower section here. And uh, now I've got like sort of a plan, because I just did this upper section. This lower section I'm going to do it the same way. And then even lower yet, I'm going to do that the same way as well. Use my six, cut in these corners. I can go back, use my six to clean that up. What we're getting up to is this three brake lines here before I start pushing that corner around. Probably before I finish this, I'll jump up top. I think an early misconception might be that uh, you would want to take more material off the wall. But in fact, this, this wall here has really good side light. You can see the texture that we're covering. And you can see I'm leaving a very substantial amount of material. And it's still not enough to do a lot of damage. I mean, we've only used half a bucket so far. So we're looking pretty good. These uh, bonos window, uh, these corners I always cut in with the six. You know, just more control. I'm, I am alternating between tools, but there's so much cut in on these projects always that, you know, if I'm doing something in here, and this is the incorporation of the, the drywall methodology. Always left to right, pretty much all my videos, I always end in the lower right hand corner of the room. Here's something as I'm looking back, this is kind of funky, a little thick, so get a little fresh mud, reactivate it, and just kind of, I can go back and clean up stuff. Um, you got a little bit of working time there. All my motions with my trial are abstract, that creates my design as I go. Instead of, instead of having to hide lap lines like we do in drywall, we're actually creating lap lines as part of our design. We've got our accent walls coated. Pulled the uh, mirror off of this wall. Beautiful day here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And uh, Bob included this room, so... Uh, while the, our accent walls were drying, I went ahead and masked this room, and I'm going to coat this next to give those accent walls ample time. So when we cut in the color, uh, we won't get a lot of mixing. Sometimes in bathrooms, I just like to use the plastic versus uh, use a four-ply plastic instead of uh, drop cloths because it's quicker and I can cut it the size I want. Okay, when I go to cut in with my six-inch, it's good to do everything, everything that I can with my 6 inch when I'm using it. Just expedite my time with the 6 inch blade. And I'm just cruising. Stuff that I do with my 6, I do with my 6. Stuff that I, needs to be done with the trowel, I do with the trowel. It takes the place of a square edge trowel. 
could probably use a square edge trowel, except for um, I think it would dig into the wall a little more than the pool trowel. Pool trowel tends to float on the top, leaving me that nice smooth lap line. Another use reason for using one side is I'm constantly cleaning that edge because I'm always cutting in. This isn't plaster. I'm not working. A, I'm not working the wall. I'm laying a texture out and and moving on. That's all. We're not burnishing. I don't ever burnish any of that. And, uh, we're getting ready to do our walls. Our minor sand here is almost dry. So we're going to get nice uh, cut in there and you can see just how much shrinkage we're getting. And because we live in such a dry climate here in Albuquerque, um, that fireplace is drying like nobody's business. End of day two. We uh, managed to get her coated. It's uh, a little after six o'clock, kind of a long day with the addition of this bathroom here, getting it prepped. But this is a good four day you know, project for one person. We went through about uh, five boxes of mud today. You can see like even there's some areas where you know, I'm getting pretty thick. We'll be able to knock that down. Um, generally that happens on the bullnose uh, where I get a little bit thick, but I'll, uh, I'll run my hand or light sand over this before I second coat. Our tape section down here where we taped, remember I only tape coated that. That's, uh, we've pretty much buried it with one coat of joint compound. Got my gold. Again, like a very small pancake size. Give this a quick swirl. I don't want to swirl this too much. And I don't want to work it too much. The more I work it on the wall, the more it blends the gold. So I want to get those really nice gold accents going. By doing a thin layer or a thinner layer, that will require me to, to uh, have less movement. Obviously around the arch, all of my design and movement are going to be directional when I do arches, large archways and stuff. And on this coat, I'm leaving almost zero texture. We're pulling, we're pulling all those high areas out nice and smooth and we're introducing the gold. And uh, it's what I call the sculptural coat. We're getting about to the end of this wall, and uh, just still moving along, you can see my brake line is abstract, of course, and uh, we're just still working this, uh, this gold here. Now here's where trial size could be debatable. My trial is just a little big at 14 inches to fit in there. Again, I'm just uh, putting it on there. I'm just sort of covering. I don't want to really work at a time yet until I get all that material on the wall. So I'll work, you know, put all of it on. And then here's where your design, you know, you can see the design movement follows kind of the trowel. The nature of the medium allows this really nice swirl. Um, there again on my contrast, uh, my contrasting colors, I'm just being careful cutting in. On the last coat, when I go to do the Hildago Brown, I'll mask this color. That's why I'm doing this wall first. End of day three. Um, our fireplace is dry. There you can see what it looks like before the sealer. And I ended with the the dog will brown here on this wall, which is hard to see because of the lighting. But uh, yeah, our gold turned out pretty cool. And uh, you can see just whittling around this room. Pretty tough room. This wall turned out pretty cool. And uh, the bathroom's almost completely dry on the second coat. I could conceivably start sealing this. But, uh, not today. We'll hit it tomorrow.
before I seal is pretty much just hit the angles. If there's little burrs and stuff, maybe on top I can hit those. Okay, so it took me about 20 minutes to sand this entire job, there's a lot of bull nose, but uh, also when we go to put that sealer on, it's gonna compress the uh, the Fresco Harmony as well. Uh, so normally you use a clear sealer, it dries clear, compresses the mud, all that stuff. If, I, if I'm doing a gold swirl design, uh, I put a ratio of gold into the actual sealer and mix it in, and uh, instructions for that can be found on the outside of the Modern Masters uh, uh, um, sealer. And it's not a huge deal to have big spots, but um, this stuff, I'm putting it on and taking it off. I want to take uh, as much of it back off as I can. Now everywhere that you're leaving material is going to stay gold. So you'll have like a layer of gold and what it's doing is it's really, um, it's shading and it's making this wall look really consistent. Also, this gold is going to, this gold in the sealer here is going to deepen. It's going to rich, make the whole finish uh, darker, more rich. This coat is uh, absorbing into the joint compound, making a very strong surface. Um, it's important to pull the masking right after this coat. I let it set up for maybe 10 or 15 minutes and what it does is it loosens that mud on your tape so that uh, the tape pulls uh, a lot easier. It's still kind of a pain to get this tape off of here but um, uh, you'll find it pulls uh, easier after the sealer. You notice on the sealer coat I've switched from metal to a plastic blade. Plastic blades uh, have a lot more flex and give. We're almost finished. I've got everything coated. I'm just pulling the final masking right now. And I'm thinking that I might want to just hit the top of this one more time with just an extra clear coat just because these surfaces get abused a little more. Um, bathrooms, you can coat, uh, two coats with the sealer. Um, even though I'm at the end of the job and my inclination is to go fast, I think what separates really nice walls from mediocre walls is um, the ability to just take your time at the end. Because the little details like painting outlet covers, Doing that piece for the bathroom really make a big difference. And I think that it's the little things that will have clients coming back. We're just adding a little bit of durability to the top here where maybe they're going to set stuff or whatever. And we can also hit the tops of these. I mean, this is a bookshelf, so. I assume these two areas are going to get a lot of damage. Now it's time to clean up. <laughs> what, what was that, Nick? <laughs> the walls always look like... <laughs> <laughs>